It's Wednesday, November 30th here at the West End Gun Club. Been here for about an hour or so. Uh, going to do a run through of the December 2022 NRL 22 course of fire. I did do some testing with SK long range match because I still have a few bricks of this left and I wanted to see how it shot in my Voodoo uh, 22 because as you already know, my my latest batch of Center X does not shoot well on this gun. And so I wanted to see if I could use this SK long range match in a match and it shoots okay. Uh, it's got a lot, a lot of up and down stringing. My lab radar, the battery pack actually died. I haven't charged it in years, so I, I should probably charge it now. So I have a battery pack, I need to charge it. Anyway, it was only pushing 1050, 1050 feet per second, but some of the rounds were dropping to 1010, like 1015. So the, uh, the quality of this SK long range match isn't all that great, to be honest. At least in this gun, the SDs, the, uh, the standard deviation is kind of high and you've got a lot of uh, errant velocities, um, but we'll just deal with it. 1050 is kind of slow, actually. Uh, it is colder today. I, I want to say it's about 40 something degrees, 45 degrees. I have to bust out the Kestrel, but uh, it is cooler this morning than normal. So uh, I know this stuff pushes around 1100 normally, but I'm surprised it's such a temperature drop or such a velocity drop with these morning temps. Anyway, I got a little sawdust on me because I was cutting down this, our original or the original tank trap that I used in our NL22 matches. I think I'm gonna use it for this course of fire, but I didn't want to cut it down because I made the, uh, the, the top half shorter than the bottom half segment so it doesn't tip over when you're putting all your weight on the, on the, uh, on the uh, tip. Because if you have them even, if you have a dead center where the joint is at the center, it's gonna be like, perfectly imbalanced in terms of if you put any sort of weight on top of it, you're going to tip it over. So we'll see if this holds up. If not, we'll just run the longer, the longer tent trap. But I think the short one would be nice for this course of fire or this, the stage that we're gonna have in this course of fire. Anyway, let's go ahead and start shooting the course of fire because I did set up three of the stages. So for the record, it is 44 degrees Fahrenheit here on the range this morning. Just checked it with my Kestrel. Anyway, the first stage of fire that I'm going to go through for the December 2022 course of fire is going to be dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. 120 second part time, 10 rounds, uh, just a two inch target at 63 yards on a single hanger. Uh, no real restrictions here, 10 points per impact, 100 points possible. You're going to start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. Uh, on the start signal, uh, you're going to engage the target in the following order with one shot each uh, from each position. Tip one, tip two, tip three, tip one, tip two, tip three, tip one, tip two, tip three, center. So pretty much you're gonna, you're gonna rotate around the, the tank trap on every tip three times and then shoot from the center. Pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, they do indicate tip one, tip two, tip three. If we wanna be technical about it, I'll have to number these, but I'll just start on an arbitrary tip and then I'll work my around, way around. I guess I'll do it clockwise since that seems more intuitive for most people and uh, we'll go from there, but it seems pretty straightforward.
full disclosure, I did take a mulligan on this, uh, this stage. Got in, you know, buzzer went off, took a shot, cycled the bolt. I was like, oh crap, I forgot to move. So I just reset just for the sake of practice and for this uh, video. Anyway, did the run through. It's a workout. It's straightforward, but you got to move. You got you to gotta get on target, shoot, and move. Get on target, shoot, and move. You got to do it consistently and swiftly. I finished with 108.76 elapsed, so not very much time left, like 10 seconds technically. And I was not really, I was sort of rushing, but not rushing. I felt like, hey, I could really frame this shot a little bit more, but I said, you know, I got to take the shot. So I was just keeping in mind, trying to keep that shot, trying to keep my muzzle on, on the target and just pulling it when I know, or breaking that trigger when I know it's there. So don't, don't try to frame it, but at the same time, um, you know, like don't wait too long for your shot, but at the same time, make sure you have a stable shot. Um, the only other thing I could think of to speed you up on this, depending on how your tank traps are set up, having a, a chassis mounted bag. I ran just the Game Changer Schmedium bag you know, not attached. That does take a little bit of time um, to set it and set it down as opposed to just barrel, you know, a chassis attached. So if it's mounted to your forehand, that could probably save you a couple seconds per shot. So I don't know if you need to shave that amount of time because you want more time to frame the shot, maybe that's the way to go. I'm not entirely sure. I think I'm going to stick with just this method. Uh, it works well enough for me. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next stage of fire. The second stage of fire we're going to run through is called Christmas Cookie Overload. 120 second part time, 12 rounds. We have four targets all at 86 yards. One inch and a one and a half inch on a double hanger, two and a half and a three inch on a double hanger. One bag limit, no bipods. The uh, scoring though is variable. So the, the one inch is worth 10, one and a half is worth eight, two and a half is worth five, and a three inch is worth three points. You're gonna start seated in the chair, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. Um, on the start signal, the shooter will remain seated in the chair whilst taking a position on the sawhorse. Shooter will announce which target they intend to engage and engage the designated target for the predetermined amount of points. The shooter may change the targets at any time, but must clearly announce the change loud enough for the RO to hear. All right. This is a little unfair for our range because we are shooting at an upward angle, about three or four degrees. So usually people will be shooting on flat ground. And so you'll kind of be up on the, uh, a little bit more on the target but we'll be shooting upwards. I'm debating on whether or not to, to put some kind of stilts to raise this a little bit to make it easier for people. Um, I'm shorter in stature. I could probably make a bag on this work and shoot upwards. It's, you know, I could do it. But taller people, bigger people, those without, you know, aren't flexible, it's gonna be rough. Um, I'm gonna shoot it with a big bag like this right now as my front rest to get elevation. We'll see how it goes. But I will say that for our range, it's going to be a little difficult. But I'll try to, but we're all shooting against one another, right? It's all relative in terms of scores. But I'll try to come up with something maybe to raise up the sawhorse off the ground a little bit. It's not going to account for that huge elevation shift for the target area, but it'll be something. Anyway, let's go ahead and try to run this, run through the stage. Oh shoot, mag change, right? The 12 rounder? Can't remember. I'll fire the 12 rounds just in case. 
It was a, I think it was a ten. It's a twelve. Bro, it was a ten round stage. Totally forgot. Missed that last one. I sort of brain farted when I was doing that stage run through. For some reason, I was like, wait, am I doing a 12 rounder or a 10 rounder? This is a 12 round stage. Um, so 120, 120 points possible. I did drop three. Um, so I will say it's doable. Your gun just needs to be relatively accurate. I mean, because one inch at 86 yards, uh, to be honest, people think that should be normal for 22, but that's not, I mean, your average 22 probably won't shoot that. I mean, it's a lot to ask for consistently. One inch at 86 yards. So I sort of brain farted when I was doing that stage. I just, I, I had two mags ready to go thinking I'm going to do a mag change for 12 rounds. But then when I was shooting, I was like, wait, okay, it's my 10th round. Am I done? And I just totally forgot it was a 12 round stage. But I did finish it off with 97.64 elapsed, 97.64 seconds. Uh, I will say that it's doable, the stage. You can do the one inch. Uh, I feel like one inch at 86 yards is a lot to ask for for the average 22. I mean, not every 22 can do that. So you may need to go with a one and a half. Uh, but just think of it this way. Uh, 10 points is the max score, or 10 points per shot's max, 120 points. The next one is an eight pointer. So eight times... Uh, 12 is going to be, what is that, 880, 96 points? 96 points max. So if you do a clean at 1.5, that's better than what I did um, dropping three, going for the one inch at 10, because I only got 90 points. Yeah, 90 points. So that's one way you can think about it. Can you, uh, can you shoot the one inch and only miss two? If you can, then that's worth the max it out. So I guess that's the way to approach it. Um, do, the, do the math in your head, see if it's possible. Um, for me, again, I'm shorter. I can flex a little bit on my, my back. Um, what most people should be probably trying to do is using their knees for support. So if you can see my heels, I'm putting my heels kind of up to get my knees higher. So I can basically put the flats of my arms in front of the knees. And I can just bend over, kind of shoot. If we were shooting a flat ground, we'd probably basically do the same thing, although I'd be using a smaller, shorter bag so I can just get on the gun like this. But here we're just kind of letting the gun tilt up, letting the gun rest into my body or to my, my arms and my arms on my knees. And it's relatively stable, to be honest. So I was able to break clean shots consistently. So again, be forewarned for anyone showing up to this match at the West End Gun Club. Um, we'll be shooting upwards, so you have to keep, take, keep, keep that in account. I'll try to make accommodations. We'll see if we can get this a little bit taller so that you can work it with whatever bags that you can bring. And you can always borrow other people's bags. I mean, even mine, if you're my squad and you want to borrow any of my bags, you can feel free to do so. Anyway, that's it for this stage. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Third stage of fire we're gonna run through today is called Elf on a Shelf, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have a single three inch target at 92 yards. Uh, restrictions, no bipods uh, for this stage. Uh, this is the bonus time, bonus stage, so if you finish with extra time on the clock under the part-time, you get bonus points. You're going to start standing, rifle, and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the start signal, the shooter will engage the target with two shots from the following props. The cinder block, five-gallon bucket, two-gallon bucket, the flat tire, and then the leaning tire as depicted in the diagram or photo of the course of fire. So two, 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 and two for 10 rounds total. Very straightforward, just can't use a bipod. Uh, that, that actually makes it a little bit difficult for our range because you may want to use a bipod given that we're shooting at an up angle and it will help you. So a lot of people are going to be crouching basically trying to figure out how to shoot probably prone or like a low crouch. But I'm anticipating most people will end up shooting prone. Uh, the bucket might be a challenge because it's a little bit t a tall prone, but we'll see how people will attempt it. I think I have an idea of how I'll do it in my head without the bipod. Uh, but we'll see how it goes.
I thought this stage was not that difficult to fire. I did miss one shot, but I'll talk about that in a second. I did what I didn't go into prone. The reason why I don't go into prone because it takes too long to get in and out of prone. It's, unless you want to roll over, I guess you can just kind of slide over. For me, it was easier just to go kind of on a on a. I knelt down like this on both knees, and I just kind of crouched down and got my elbows on the ground and shot upwards. My neck and my back can support that 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 uh, sort of uh, support that position. I know a lot of people can't do that, but that's how I did it. Um, if you can't, I'm guessing you're going to go prone. But what that does give you an advantage of is staying in this kind of kneeling crouch position is that you can go to the bucket, the tall five-gallon bucket, and not be in this awkward prone position. You can still st go, 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 and you're not coming in and out of prone because likely, more than likely than not, you're not going to shoot prone off the bucket. If you are, I don't think it's going to be all that stable, to be honest. But maybe you can. Uh, at an up angle, that is. But... Again, I went with the kneeling position. So I did drop one shot, and that's on this tire stage, and I blame this pole. So I think most people, when they're shooting off of the tire, the leaning tire, they're going to want to just shoot off this, this top part. But if you look here, I have this pole in the way. Um, I end up shooting here with a gun canted, sort of, and I think I threw one round to the right, the ninth round. And uh, wouldn't, I was able to hit the tenth, but what I'm going to have to do to accommodate our range is I'll probably shove either the tire a little bit so that you can still shoot the flat without the pole in the way and you can shoot this apex without the pole in the way. It's going to be kind of weird or I can just move the tire in between these two poles here. Uh, it's just an unfortunate thing we have to deal with with, these, with this rim fire range because they have these poles in front of the firing line. Uh, they, they use for these silhouette matches. Anyway, that's enough talk about this stage. Uh, I'll figure out our range of logistics uh, later on and I'll have to get a new bucket. Let's go ahead and move on to the next stage. The fourth stage we're going to run through is called Up on the House Stop. Bang, bang, bang. 120 second part time, 12 rounds. We have eight targets of four banks. We have a one and one and a half at 66. We have a one and a half and a two inch at 77. A two inch and a two and a half at 88. Two and a half and a three inch at 99. So 66, 77, 88, and 99 yards. Uh, restriction no dialing, only parallax and magnification are allowed. So you can't adjust your elevation dial. It's holdovers. So 10 points, 120 possible. You're going to start standing, rifle, and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a position on the rooftop and engage the targets with one shot each from near to far in the following order, order at each distance. Large, small, large. No part of the shooter's body, rifle, or equipment can touch the ground. So you're basically going to be all on the rooftop. So basically, three shots per bank, um, probably going to need a mag change. Uh, large, small, large, large, small, large, large, small, large. And doing holdovers. Pretty straightforward, but let's see how it goes. Relax. Parallax. Not that difficult. I finished uh, my 12th shot was 85.55. I shot it clean. So I had plenty of time. You could really frame your shots on the stage. It's not that difficult. Assuming you're going to run a bigger bag like this, like a pump pillow to give you support, because that's all you're gonna do is just basically support the rear of the bag. It's almost like shooting kind of a quasi bench rest, quasi prone. Uh, you've got good support on both the front and the rear, 
and it should be easy. And as far as holdovers, just make sure you have good holdovers uh, on your reticle and you, I, you know where to hold. I have two tenths of a mil uh, graduations on my reticle, so I know that I, I have a relatively good uh, idea of how to hold over. So just learn how to use your reticle. It's a good way to practice it for stages like this. I did adjust parallax uh, between each target, uh, kind of needed it. Uh, they are not too large, so I, I did want to shoot, uh, dial parallax to make sure I had no issues there. Anyway, that's it for this stage. Let's move on to the last one. The last stage of fire we're going to run through is called Don't K-Wile Your Exercise Plan, 120 second part time, 10 rounds. We have the full K-Wile rack at 42 yards, which is the one inch, three quarter, half inch, and quarter inch. And then we have a four inch on a single hanger at 100 yards. 10 points per impact, 100 points possible. There's no restrictions on this stage. You're going to start standing, rifle, and all gear in hand, mag in, action open. Now, rather than read off the description, which makes it confusing because it's a hit to move on stage, um, and they kind of lay out the target and the position you're going to be in, it makes it confusing. So here's the stipulation though, hit to move on. The second stipulation is you must change position between prone and the top of the 55 gallon barrel, regardless of hit or miss. So every time you shoot, you must change from either from prone to barrel or back to prone, whichever way, vice versa. So here's how it's going to go. You're going to engage the far target with two shots and you're going to go to the KYL and engage the largest target with two shots. Then go to the next target, the three quarter inch KYL, two shots, half inch KYL, two shots, and then the quarter inch KYL, two shots. Hit to move on and you must change positions between prone or barrel, barrel to prone uh, for every shot. Let's go ahead and run through it and see how it goes.
This stage is probably going to be the most uh, difficult stage of the entire course of fire for most people. I timed out twice, did two runs. Uh, there's a lot of difficulty here. Um, not only are you transitioning between every shot, but you're transitioning between every shot even if you miss. Uh, and it's a hit to move on stage. So what's happening here is um, I ran my bipod as close to the magwell as possible. That allows me to run the bipod on the top of the 55 gallon barrel surface. And I don't bother to move the bipod back and forth in order to shoot prone. Um, that saves me time there. Um, but however, it's just, if you miss a shot, it's just, you have to move. Um, if you had, if you could miss a shot and stay in the same position to re-engage, this would be a lot easier. But the fact that you're still moving between every shot, regardless of hit or miss, and it's a hit to move on, you're basically burning a lot of time. Um, I will say that uh, I still would like to figure out how I would like best to shoot this, but this is very, a very, um, I think this is a very high level of difficulty stage in terms of uh, NRL 22, um, comparatively speaking. Um, not much else to say here, uh, but we'll go ahead and uh, pack it in and we'll call it a day. Let's take a quick look at my paper target that I was shooting on this morning with the SK long range match. I believe this is about 20 rounds. No, 10 rounds, 10 rounds, 20 rounds. I think it was 20 rounds. It might have been 20 rounds. 10. I was just warming up the gun, the barrel, and uh, I think I was another 10 maybe. Five. 10 to 5. Might be 5. But these are my last two. This is a five round group and a five round group. Not too bad. Um, that's actually pretty decent. Uh, once you get it warmed up and the barrel fouled, it shoots pretty well. So, um, but it has a tendency to have a shot that has lower velocity than the rest, and that's where you're getting this this one down there. Um, uh, that's just a lot that I have. But it shoots better than that center X that I have, that I got a case of, or the better part of a case. So I'm gonna. I think I have three bricks and two bricks, well, two and a half bricks of this SK long range match left, so I can actually use this for matches with the Voodoo. That should tie me over at least uh, for the last three months or four months because. That counts matches as well as uh, match director walkthroughs that I do. So hopefully that'll last me for the rest of this season. All done with the December 2022 NRL 22 Course of Fire run through. I think this, this Course of Fire should be interesting for, for everyone. There's gonna be one very challenging stage, I think. And then the other ones should be, uh, I think people will, feel, will find that they could actually do quite well in them. So I think we should see some decent scores in those stages. We'll be interesting to see what's, what scores we'll see in the, uh, the alternating position stage. And then also the, uh, I guess, the variable, the variable score stage where the different targets are for different points. Um, we'll see how people game that one. Anyway, West End Gun Club, our December match will be in less than two weeks. It's going to be on December 11th, Sunday, uh, as I stated in prior vlogs. We had to move the match up two weeks because December the fourth the fourth Sunday of December, which is when we uh, usually have the matches for Sunday, that one happens to be Christmas Day. So we moved it up so we can have the match and uh, people can come and shoot and we can send it, submit scores for our club for December. Anyway, that's it for today, uh, November thirtieth, Wednesday here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.